Afternoon all, how are we doing? We doing well? You seen any good presentations so far? Um, I want to kind of get a little bit of a sense of you guys and what you do. If, uh, if, you are, if you would consider yourself a user experience designer, put up your hand. Right, you're lying. You're big, fat, scary liars. I don't mean that really, I'm sure you're lovely people. But there is this um, thing going on at the moment, isn't there, about user experience design. And we talk a lot about user experience design these days. Um, and you see job adverts, don't you, for user experience UX UI designers, right? What is a UX UI designer? And actually, I think we've kind of got into this world where user experience and user interface are interchangeable with one another. But the truth is, that's not actually the case. They aren't interchangeable. They're two very separate disciplines. And so what I want to do over the next few minutes, 23 minutes and 48 seconds, according to my clock, is enthuse you and excite you about the potential of user experience and your role in it, even if you're not what you would call a designer. Even if you're not a traditional designer, you have an absolutely fundamental role in creating a great user experience. And that's what I want to enthuse you about today. But it begins with a very simple question, which is, well, what is user experience then? If we're saying it's not just drawing pretty pictures, if it's not pushing pixels around, if it's not just building interfaces, then what is it? I would actually say that user experience design is the coming together of multiple disciplines. And that's why I don't like the term user experience designer, because it, it has the implication that it's this one person who is a designer who designs the user experience. And the truth is that's not the case. To create a great user experience involves lots of different people coming together. It's the intersection of user interface design, customer experience, and product design. But it's actually even more than that. Marketers help shape the user experience. User researchers, copywriters, and even developers. Developers are often pushed out of the user experience design process are fundamental to the success of a great user experience. You see, at its heart, user experience is about a single thing. It is about meeting the needs of today's connected consumers. Because people have changed. Their expectations have changed. You guys know all of this. Today, user experience is about providing self-service. 69% of consumers say that they feel good both about themselves and the company they're interacting with if they're able to solve a problem themselves rather than having to call a call center or speak to someone or get help. People want to be empowered by the products and apps and services that you provide. They want to feel like superheroes with these magical powers. That's what your iPhone makes you feel like, doesn't it? You've got the whole of human knowledge in your pocket right now. That's a superpower. And that's the kind of experience that people are wanting. They don't want to be reliant on others. But great user experience is also about designing for the gaps. One of the biggest areas that I think we, we fall down in these days um, as we design experiences is the gaps the gaps between different parts of the experience, the gaps between channels, between social media and your website, between your mobile um, you know, app and your website or social media, the gaps between business silos, that the customer service department doesn't know what the web team's doing, that doesn't know what the marketing people are doing, and customers fall in the gaps of those experiences. And then there's gaps when we move from one device to another, which we commonly do these days, don't we? So there are so many gaps 
that we need to be paying attention to as we design the user experience of tomorrow. We also need to really begin to work hard to get our companies to change their culture, to start taking user experience um, seriously. Because the truth is that people that come to a conference like this, you guys already get it. You understand the value of creating a great user experience. But some of our managers and our companies that we work for don't necessarily get that. And we need to start becoming user experience champions and advocates. And that means we need to get better at presenting and selling user experience into our organization. We need to be able to explain that user experience is expected these days, that people expect an outstanding customer service, and that more than half of consumers have stopped using a company because of a poor customer experience. It's absolutely vital to success in today's business world. Getting the user experience right is a great way of generating repeat business, isn't it? And a great way of standing out. I worked for a client once that was a, an e-commerce client. And they sold ready meals to old people. Um, and I'm talking very old people, OK? Often the children of the people who were the customers did the ordering for them. But the children were in their 60s. The customer was in their 80s and 90s. And they sold frozen ready meals that got delivered to your door. And you think, why did anyone choose to buy frozen ready meals from this little organization, this little e-commerce site, rather than getting it delivered with their Tesco shop, you know, with their big supermarket shop? where they can get a lot of other things. Well, the reason is, is this company managed to differentiate through an outstanding customer experience. They worked out that their customers were worried about having a stranger turn up at their house because they didn't know who that person was. So they police checked all of their drivers. And all of their customers had a photograph of who the delivery man would be. Also, they knew that their audience couldn't put the meal in the fridge themselves. Because they couldn't, you know, when the, you get food delivered, it turns up in a big box, and they couldn't carry that in. So the, the driver would come into the house and actually pack things away. That is all part of a great customer experience, and that enabled them to differentiate themselves. That is part of what a good user experience is. And those kinds of great user experiences also lead to recommendations, don't they? And word of mouth. So it's absolutely vital to success. But there's a flip side to this as well, which is that if you don't get it right, it can go horribly wrong if you provide a bad experience. A gentleman flew British Airways and his luggage got lost. And his son was sorting it out for him, and his son did everything you're supposed to do. He went on the website and filled in the form. No response. Nothing came back. He then went um, online. Um, sorry, he then, uh, he then called the call center, sat on hold for ages. Your call is important to us, but we're not so important that we're going to answer it. And he sat on hold for ages. Still nothing. So one Friday night, he was so frustrated with the situation that he decided to take things into his own hands and do what all good young people do these days. He ranted uncontrollably on Twitter. And he ranted about how, much, how dissatisfied he was with British Airways. And he got no response from British Airways at all. The reason being is they only monitored social media between 9 to 5 on weekdays. So by Friday evening, there was no one looking. So he finally snapped, and he took out a promoted tweet, right? Paid money to take out this ad. Don't fly British Airways. Their customer service is horrendous. Now, that in itself is bad enough and embarrassing. But on Saturday, there wasn't a lot going on in the world of tech. Nobody ever announces anything on a Saturday, do they? So, um, so the tech 
you know, TechCrunch and, um, and, and these different publications picked up on this as a story and published it. Ha, 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 isn't this funny? Which in itself is bad enough. But then the British newspapers, on, a, on Sunday, there was no, you know, no much going on in the world. Nobody had bombed Syria recently. Donald Trump hadn't said anything racist. It was very boring. So what they chose to do is pick up on the story that was in TechCrunch and post that. So by the time the staff of British Airways came back in on Monday morning, they were faced with a major PR disaster, all because they provided a bad user experience. But it can be an incredibly powerful tool, too. Creating a great user experience and beginning to build a relationship with your customers can actually improve your products and services. You know, you only need to look at something like Uber and the lessons that Uber have learned from interacting and learning from their customers. But the list could go on and on. But creating a great user experience means overcoming resistance. If you want to become a user experience champion in your organization, you're going to need thick skin. It's going to be hard. There's going to be barriers to overcome. But I'd encourage you to do it. Winston Churchill once said that success is going from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. And that is the mantra on which I've built my life. <laughs> and, and I've sat through many a meeting repeating that endlessly in my head hoping that it will help get me to the end of it. But if we want to become user experience champions, we need to start breaking down business silos, working collaboratively with people across our organization, spending time sitting side by side with people that have got no disciplines in common with you. Not just designers and developers sitting together, but designers and marketers with you know, developers and copywriters, all working closely and collaboratively together. We also need to move away from this project-based thinking that seems to be embedded in our organization. User experience is something that improves the more you observe users, and you don't really get good feedback from users until you've got something out in the marketplace. But the trouble is, in a lot of organizations, once something is launched, it's done. We need to break that kind of thinking. We need to stop treating um, uh, uh, user experience issues as a finite project. Instead, we need to think of it like a garden, that it improves over time. The more work we do with user experience, the more we tend it, the more we prune it, the more we look after it, the more it will flower. We also need to look at ending business as usual. We have so many ingrained behaviors in our companies that you're not even aware of. Things that you do out of habit more than consideration. I worked with a charity once that year and year out used to do a big TV advertising campaign. For years and years. And it used to be back in the day that you used to have a, the call to action on the TV campaign will be ring us and make a donation. And then this thing called the internet came along, and so they just swapped out one, that, just that last little call to action. Go to the website to make a donation. And the years went by, and they saw the number of conversions slowly declining year on and year in. And they spent more money on advertising, more and more pouring in to try and turn things around. They were stuck in this pattern of doing what they'd always done. Of course, the problem was is the website wasn't converting because it was crap. But they just continued in the same path they'd always done. And even when I presented them with solid numbers that said if you stopped advertising for one year, they were spending millions a year on advertising. If you stopped advertising for one year and took the same money and put it onto the website, it would be the equivalent of driving an extra 33 million people to the website, more than you could possibly achieve through any advertising campaign. But no, they were stuck in their thinking. Are you stuck in your thinking? Are you challenging everything you do, or are you doing the same things again and again? For example, are you navel-gazing? Are you endlessly looking internally? Now, this is a great example. This is PC World, where I went to buy, a, web, uh, buy a, um, a new MacBook, this one actually. 
went there to buy this MacBook. I knew exactly what I wanted. I made a decision. I'd gone to the website. It was obvious because I'd gone to the website. I wanted to buy something. I wouldn't have gone to the website just to hang out. Woo, this is a funky place to spend my afternoon. I went to the website with a specific task in my mind. I couldn't find what I was looking for because all the front page had was this big TV ad, this big banner advertisement. They weren't looking after users' needs. They were just pushing their agenda, their current campaign, their current way of thinking. So we need to get better at responding to users' needs. But that, of course, means educating management. And that's always tough, isn't it, to get your boss to understand all this stuff. Now, Jared Spool, a, um, a usability expert, wrote a brilliant piece on this that is so not encouraging. He wrote a depressing piece called Why I Can't Convince Executives to Invest in UX and Neither Can You. Wow, that cheered up my day when I saw that. But actually, when you read it, what he was saying is that we spend all our time saying we need to take users seriously, we need to care about their needs, et cetera, et cetera. And management just don't care about that kind of stuff. They care about bonuses. They care about shareholder value. They care about the next round of venture capital. They care about whatever else, right? Profit. So what we need to do is if we're going to present user experience as the next big thing within our organizations, if we're going to get management to care about it and invest in it, we need to frame it in those ways. We need to demonstrate that whatever their problem, user experience has the potential to help with that. So we need to get better at how we present user experience. If you want to check it out, there's the URL for that article. I highly recommend it. OK. The other thing that I think is really important that I just want to emphasize here is the role of developers. Who's a developer in this room? Yeah, quite a lot of you. You always seem to get pushed out when it comes to user experience, right? But you have a profound impact on the user experience. You can really balls up the experience for users. Capture, convoluted passwords, form validation. The list goes on and on and on. So you need to make sure that you're at the table when it comes to user experience. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in my workshop tomorrow. Make sure that you are engaging in uh, the user experience process. You're sitting in on the usability test sessions. You're getting in there from the beginning. I encourage you to push hard when it comes to user experience, to make sure you get a seat at the table. And it's not all just about the designer drawing pretty pictures. By the way, I used to be a designer, so I can be rude about them. Developers are a key component in great, creating a great user experience. Don't exclude them from the process. So where can you start with all of this? What's the next step in making this happen? How do you stop it turning into this? Well, for a start, you need to start understanding the tools of the trade when it comes to creating a great user experience. There's so many tools out there that can help. And I can't dive into them today, but I can at least point you at them. Tools like user journey mapping. Who here has done user journey mapping? Right. Find out about it. Read up about customer journey mapping. It is absolutely invaluable one of the most useful tools you will have in understanding the user's experience and identifying ways that you can improve that. And I don't care whether you're a designer or a developer or whatever. This is a very pretty looking customer journey map. You can create the things in Excel if you're so inclined. I spoke at a project management conference, and there was a cheer at that point. Strange people, project managers. Um, then, then, of course, there's uh, user story cards. Who's used user story cards? Raise your hands. Again, another massively invaluable tool. Very simple statement. Three, three um, parts to it. I am, I want to, so I can. Instead of building new features and functionality on your website, frame them in terms of this. Right? You're not, gonna, you're not building an e-commerce checkout system. You're building a journey that fulfills this story card. Not this one, obviously. This is, you know, a, a megalomaniac story card. Then, of course, there are empathy maps. 
Another really useful tool in understanding how users think, what they're trying to achieve, where they're going. These kinds of things should be built into our processes. We should become user champions, championing them every day to make um, you, you know, looking at the user experience a fundamental baked in part of everything we do. But designers stop there. That's their tool set we've looked at. But we've already established that we believe the user experience is more than that. So we need to start delving deeper. We need to start plugging gaps between those platforms. I've got um, uh, an app, uh, a banking app, and it does a great thing to plug a gap between two platforms. Okay? I log into the app right, with my PIN number, and I go and look at my account. And I see in the account there's something that I'm not quite sure about, a payment that I didn't think I approved. So I need to speak to somebody. Now, normally in that scenario, what I would then do is, using the same phone I've logged in for, I would dial in to the, the telephone people, sit on hold for a bit, and then I would have to re-authenticate myself and say who I am, you know, and prove that I'm me. But because I've already logged into that app, I can press a button in the app, and it already has authenticated me and connects me directly to someone in the call center. They've bridged that gap between those two experiences. Those kinds of things we need to be looking for and focusing on. We also need to start thinking beyond um, the screen as well. Thinking about users' concerns, whether it be in the emails they receive, or their re your return policy, or your security, or your privacy. Now, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I once worked with um, a, 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 an unusual client. They're called Love Honey. And they sell sex toys. Now, Love Honey were masters of the user experience and creating a great user experience. They knew that if you were going to order a sex toy from an e-commerce site, that there were a lot of things you cared about that were nothing to do with the user interface. Things like, what was going to appear on my credit card? And is this going to kind of fall apart when it's delivered by the postman? Is it going to start vibrating when the postman hands it to me? What's the labeling going to be like on the envelope? Will my nan be able to see I've just bought a sex toy? So they address all of these things on their website. They've got a great video that shows these sex toys being packaged up. They show what will appear on your credit card. That is good user experience, thinking beyond just the interface and embracing the wider thing. And as a slight aside, there's a great book called The Best Interface is No Interface that goes a step beyond even that and starts saying, how can we make um, our interactions with uh, systems invisible, intuitive? There's a great, um, I can't remember which brand of car it is, that now if you've got your key in your pocket, right, but you've got a handful of, of um, uh, groceries that you need to put in the boot, if you kick the back of the car, it detects the phone in your pocket and opens the boot. So you don't have to get your key out to put it in. That's good user experience. That's using sensors. The other great one is, um, uh, 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 I'll show it to you, is DPD. DPD is a livery company here in the UK. And they put GPS in every single vehicle, OK? So they'll give you an hour slot when they're going to deliver, which in itself is pretty impressive. But they'll also go a step further than that, and they'll, they'll tell you where the vehicle is. You can look it up on a map. So then suddenly, you know whether you've got time to go to the toilet with fear of not missing the delivery. Perhaps that's just me that has that problem. I've reached that age. So those kinds of um, tools are just as important. And what's really good about the DPD example is it's saving users time. And time is one of the most valuable commodities we can, ha uh, we can save people, more even than money these days. If you could save a user time, you're going to be the, their hero. But if you waste time, you're going to be dead to them. We need to start um, fighting for better products. Airbnb is a great example of this. So often we work with the constraints that were given. But Airbnb didn't. 
they decided to hire professional photographers to photograph every single one of the properties that they were, um, they were promoting. Can you imagine the cost of that? But it paid off. It made their product better, more people booked Airbnb locations, that was the point that they took off. But more than that, it attracted more hosts than ever before because it looked like they were investing in the host as well. And people made the effort to clear up their place of work as well. We could go deeper, people. We could go further in user experience than the user interface. We can look at the touch points that people interact with, email, text, call centers. There are so many more touch points than just the website and the mobile app. We can look at our organizational structures, how we need to make profound changes to the way that we organize ourselves internally to make a difference. And we can look at transforming our culture through incentives, assessment criteria, training and education. We should be champions of user experience by running workshops, introducing service manuals, prototyping, testing, collaborating, bringing our colleagues on board. This is a deep rabbit hole that will take you way out of your comfort zone of what you think your job is. But somebody needs to do it. And if not you, then who? Thanks very much for listening.